Carmi, we're uh, at our last day here at LCO Reservation. We are probably got, what, four more hours, then we start to drive. We may get to see Nicholas. Some will know who Nicholas is. We don't know if we'll get to see him or not. But why don't you share first of what you kind of expect or thought things would be, and then we'll talk about what took place. But what, what was in your mind as we uh, started out? What did you think was going to go on, happen, and... How did you see uh, what our ministry was going to be while we're here? Well, um, I was hoping I could really see like how the homes. I thought like natives. I haven't been into a native home or something, so I thought oh, it must be different from you know. So I was hoping to see those homes and how the people in there live, and you know, see for myself the very houses and you know stuff like those. And um, my mind was that, like the. Um, ancient natives, or you know, like like Filipino homes, yeah, right? Filipino That's kind homes, of homes, like going into the um, how do you call that one? Uh, rural, rural areas and stuff. That was my picture, my mindset. But um, and then I thought that oh, they're gonna be mad or not receptive because we're different color, and oh, at least you know it was weird. It was funny. I said, well. I feel like I will blend in with my skin color, probably knowing their colors. Maybe they'll not get mad with me or something. So, so a, a lot of this conceptions in your mind, right? Yeah, yeah. And then we were told that they would mistake you for a Navajo, so uh, that <laughs> yeah, was that funny. Yeah, that one I was, yeah, it was funny. Well, I feel better with that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and so, and some of this is, is uh, in my say, stereotypes and stuff like that. But when we came here, we really never did get to go into, quote, the real world or uh, in the homes, even though most of the homes we look at, most of the homes are just standard homes, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But we never got into some of those uh, areas that you would think we'd be in and with some of the traditional natives that might uh, not be as receptive to us. And that was kind of our goal, but it, it turned around to be something very different yeah. than what we planned on. So. Yeah. Why, why don't you talk about what happened? Because we, you know, you know me. I wanted to get into uh, some of the darker places where people are getting to where there might be some drug dealing going on, or the homeless, or you know, alcoholics laying around, and da 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 da, all that kind of stuff. And we're used to Seattle, and it, it's really different than Seattle or the uh, the the inner cities as far as uh, where the people are at. They're not hanging around. Even at the casinos, they're not. You know, there isn't the guy with the a uh, bottle of, of beer and a no. can of beer in a bag and all that stuff much different but um and then we'll talk at the end here why we think we weren't supposed to do that and that we have a goal to try to get in some of the dark places the next time we come here but what did we encounter and, and was it fruitful to be here yeah um yeah of course it was but uh first off i can say truly the scripture that says god's ways are not our ways it's higher than ours his thoughts are not our thoughts and so his ways are you know as i said not our way so we i i personally have uh some plans or something but god has a diff had a different plan obviously and but it was so good i feel so good and and um yeah um, it was so good, the receptivity of the hearts, the, you know, given the th fact that the, the very things they were sharing from their hearts were kind of like uh, shameful or, you know, but they didn't have any embarrassment, but they were just pouring out their hearts. And that showed me that they're really serious, you know, in encountering God, they're serious in, in God. Uh, moving in their hearts and in their lives to transform them and, and change them. And to me, that was powerful. You know, I don't care my preconceived plans or ideas, but then God's ideas and plans obviously prepare, prevailed in this trip. And with that, uh, I'm, I'm satisfied. So we, we should say the people that we work with is all of them or most 99% of them were Christians, uh, uh, some natives, some not natives. It was a mixture. Lady from Sweden that uh, attends oh, yeah. the church, and yeah. you know, Caucasian. Uh, some that are part native and part Mexican. Some okay. full-blooded native. A little bit of everything. Yes. And that's kind of who we are. Is we're kind of a multicultural type of philosophy that we have when it comes to ministry. But 
uh, there, there's a lot of uh, counseling that we did, and shame and guilt is something that the native people here have not learned how to handle well. That's where a lot of the addiction comes from. And I was actually told by somebody who has been here for over 30 years that at least with the uh, Ojibwa people that's here, there, there is no way of dealing with guilt and shame. And that's probably why there's such a strong addiction and alcoholism and all the other stuff. Uh, but we had people totally open up with us, right? Yeah, yeah, they were very open. As far as, you know, I could tell, they were very open, you know, because they knew that with us, you know, they won't be condemned. Instead, they will be lifted up if, you know, they need to repent of those stuff. We were, you know, we were very upfront on that, whatever, you know, they need to do. You know, we speak it out. You know, we, we have spoken the truth, you know, I, I believe and that so far they have been very, very receptive. In fact, um, they were terry-eyed, you know, the second and to the last night and last night. Um, they said, you just didn't know, Carmi, how we felt, you know, when you guys came because it's like um, you really have given us hope when we were about to give up and were, you know, very, um, what's them call it? hopeless and discouraged you know, discouraged and stuff like and those. um what we saw and you know this pulled on my heart a lot there was hunger right there's such a very hunger much, very much in fact have, have we ever seen such hunger in in all the years no, we've done ministry together as no, being married no uh, in fact just just you know i could i could cry with them because it just gave me so much encouragement to do some more, and I felt with that, you know, I felt like, did we really do something given, you know, the expectation or, or you know, the um, discouragement that they had. Um, but I believe we have given, you know, as far as we could. Well, what, what do you yeah. think of the signs? I, I think of a few, uh, and we're going to interview uh, Pastor Debbie and get her perspective, but for you, what's some of the greatest signs that they gave us that what we did was fruitful? Because we didn't see hundreds of salvations. We didn't see tons of healings. Yeah, we we didn't see all night. that kind of miraculous stuff. Um, and yet we were told miracles took place in a different realm. But what do, you, what do you see as the evidence that it was fruitful for us to be here? Well, in the first place, we were doing that night after night after night after night. And, and they didn't care. Um, we told them that we don't need food. That's why we need to start at 6 o'clock. And yet, night after night after night, they just brought food. And so we had, you know, very good food fellowship, you know, after the event. And to think that this went for, sa um, when did it start? Saturday S night? S Sunday, Sunday night. The, uh, Sunday, the, the, the last Monday, part of ministry. Tuesday, Wednesday, that, that every night, you know, Every night worship from 6 to prayer. almost 10. Yeah, almost And it was 10. worship, ministry, uh, prayer. The, it's like they didn't want to go. Yeah, it's like, um, it's okay with us. And we were already saying, hey, <laughs> it's, you know, it's late already. So that's fine. And we found out that from Pastor Debbie that that never happened. And then those consecutive nights and knowing the number of people, you know, um, she was not expecting, I believe, that, you know, the number of people that would show up. And we were almost 20, at, you know, a night or two. And, and remember when I shared, it was, uh, I think it was Wednesday night, I said I felt like we have not accomplished as much as we could have, should have, and uh, just wish we could have touched more lives. And then she, uh, she says, turn around and look behind you. And then look at all the people here. Do you know this is this is this has never happened here before? That we've had so many people together at one time, and then somebody shout out. And it's a Tuesday. I remember what night it was because they said it's a Tuesday night, and we have this many people here. Yeah. And we realized that we could have done that at the very from the beginning that we came. I know. I mean, we didn't start until like a week no. later or whatever, but we could have done that. Uh, what what? What are some of the, uh, and, and I'm purposely, when I posted updates, I don't give names, I don't give my, any details really at all. I haven't put too much of that because I want to honor people and, and, and respect them. So 
given just some general things, what's what's some of the things that you kind of seen what going on in people's lives? Oh well, um, some of them were like early childhood. They had uh, experienced some really really bad childhood, you know, abusive, you know, family and stuff, and they have carried it until now. They're you know. That was like what, 50, 60, almost 60 years ago. And so, and we could see from the countenance, you know, uh, that they had really a, a horrific um, childhood. And so, but talking to them almost every night and for the first time counseling with them, like they have, you know, um, opened up. It's like a cocoon. You know? Remember, even somebody gave a word to, to one of the people. Yeah. It's like you're in a cocoon, a butterfly in a cocoon, and it's time to burst yeah. out. Yeah. And we actually saw somebody yeah, burst somebody out. Somebody was. I, I could. Con I couldn't contain myself. And day after day after day, as she comes back, night after night, the change, the first in her countenance, and then, um, like her interaction was was like with life. She had life already in her, in her face. And to think that the first time we came over there, the first few days, it's like, she, you know, it, it was hard. I could see, you know, the hardship that she went through, you know, and carrying that through her adult life. But um, having us interaction after counseling and just fellowshipping with her and, and constantly giving the counsel and advice and some tips and recommendations of what she needs to do. Um, there's a big change. There was a big change. Even, you know, her family, you know, could testify and say, um, yeah, she's doing much better. Uh, would it, tell me uh, I, how I, my perception is what God really wants us to do is not really reach the lost as much as minister to the body of Christ, build up the body of Christ. Yeah. And we really felt like, because they're in transition for a new pastor, we really felt like part of our role it was, was is just to keep them to keep them going yeah. until they get a pastor. That they yeah. wouldn't get discouraged and not, you know, they're, they're in between a, getting a pastor. And we felt like we were supposed to encourage them, but we had no idea how much we did encourage them until we did, I mean just one of the love offerings given to us by one of the yeah. pe people we don't know who it was uh, but a very large love offering that that um, I got a bug on me well a large offering that obviously it speaks right when, when somebody does that yeah. but um, what do you think the long-term effect is um, I believe because the seeds have been planted that, uh, you know, the encouragement was there, the, the hope. They know that they have hope and that they will be able to reach out much more than we can. And so I believe, you know, as the new pastor comes in, they're going to be working alongside with him or with whoever, you know, and, and we'll just do them. They saw the example that we had for them. So I believe, because that's what a uh, couple of them said, uh, well, uh, you, you, we saw how you guys work, how, how you, you know, poured out your hearts. And so, um, yeah, I believe that, you know, they can continue the work of and, the ministry. And even one prayed that, lo, the seed that was sown in us, we want to take that seed and sow yeah. it to others. You remember that? Yeah, 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 very much. I could really remember and out of it I believe you know they can be like almost everybody is a relative so um, I know they can continue to just encourage somebody else in their family and then show them the life that they have that can I call it the new life that they have with the new hope that they have they, they will be a really a good um, model I would say for the rest of the relatives and that they can touch people that we would never be able oh, to touch yeah, anyways. Absolutely. Absolutely. And yet we saw people who had sin that didn't want to repent of it. We've seen people stuck in bondage that didn't want to get out of it. And so it wasn't all perfect and all great. And and our heart is broken for some that it seems like they're, they're you know, talking to everybody. There's, nobody knows how they're ever going to get delivered because even through Jesus Christ, it, they have to want it. And so we, we saw those things. So it wasn't all positive. Is it hard to leave? Oh, I would say it's kind of like 
bittersweet, you know, um, because I felt it's, you know, many times it's always like, mostly like that parting is just, they say, a sweet sorrow is that. So it's hard to part, you know, uh, when you see. And one more thing I would say, I felt like, you know, I have become part of the family. So I felt the bond of relationship with each one of them. And would you say uh, that, that we've had more of a bond with them than where we've been four years at, at, in, in one town? It, you know, a short, in such a short period of time. Oh, one thing came uh, to my mind um, before I forget. So uh, one thing for sure that we have done and accomplished is I believe we have steered up the gifting that, you know, the people had. Because, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you know, almost everyone had their own gifts. So we believe we were able to just, to just you know, like spark the fire. Spark again, the fire, activate you know, it. In their hearts and activate it. And so, because as for me, like for me, if, you know, I have the gift things, but it's like there's no opportunity I, or sometimes I just need, you know, someone to boost me up. And so I could, you know, flourish and blossom. So I believe that's one part that we have done, you know, as I saw it, you know, in many of them. I would say in, in a ways we were being disciplers, that, that, that we were discipling. And it was more yeah. than the, the evangelist role, more of the even the prophetic uh, exhortation role it really was the disciple and I, I had you know I haven't got to tell you about the person I talked to this morning the gentleman I walked uh, went to meet up with and um, he said he wanted to be used by God again uh -oh. that he wanted to get closer he wants to spend time in the word uh, he he's facing uh, two years, and uh, the doctor predicting he'll be dead in two years because of a cancer he has. He had nothing but hope and just. He says, "You know what? I'm gonna. I want to get free from my addictions. I want. I want to get in the Word. Um, I want to get to where I was with Jesus before." And I says, "But why? Are, are you ignoring what's going to happen to you?" He says, "I'm going to die." Anyways, I'm yeah. Gonna he die. says, "I'm going to die," but he says, "I want to die serving serving Jesus. God." Wow. I, I, and. and um, I says, but you're going to get painful. I was trying to get him to reality, right? And I says, it's going to be painful. And he says, yeah, it will be. He says, but guess what the next thing is? The next thing is going to be heaven. And he says, I just want to meet Jesus the right way. Wow. Wow. And, and, and again, not everybody was that way. Some, some obviously they want to hold on to their sin. But I think that that's probably what we've done. We've, we've stirred up the gifts. We've stirred up uh, hope. Uh, I think there's, I, I really believe there's going to be ministry after us that wasn't, that wasn't taking place before we came here. And it's only because we, we loved in the people. It's not like we did anything magical. It's not like, no. you know, there's a special anointing that we had. No, and, we and I don't know, common. there probably is an anointing with well, what we have for the love people. I mean, I think that's an anointing. Too, many people have been praying for us. Yeah. You know, yeah. all over from the church, from yeah. another church, our friends. I know, I know that, you know, they have been praying. And, and they're part, part of this, that. right? Yeah, as I said. Part of that, they're partners with us. For uh, sure. And we're only, the only yeah. reason we're here is because, because of a, a special friend because of really him. challenged challenged me. And then others said that they they knew that we were going to come back. Uh, all those words, and, and I guess we would we wrap up saying, you don't know what your words of encouragement can do to people. You don't know what speaking life can do to people. And I believe it, what he what what he has done to you, we have done also to some of the people. Yes, it's just like giving back. Yeah, and and that uh, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the encouragement and the yeah. and the challenge and and all of that. So uh, as we close oh, here, oh, one more thing yeah. before you close, yeah. I would say so. We were expecting, wow, there will be healings, deliverance, um, salvations, and all those stuff. But, uh, you know, the thing that we focused on, I believe, what was what God wanted us to focus yeah, on. Yeah, he didn't give us and release, did, that, right? He didn't give us release. To, you know me. I'd be out, out there that, in the mess, but he didn't, he didn't give the release, yeah, right? Out of that, salvations are just a plus and a bonus. And last night, literally, I was crying when two ladies gave their lives to God. And they were... They, sincere. They were sincere. As, Pastor Debbie did word for word and this, and she says, yeah, and she was like, oh my goodness, she was wailing, and you know, uh, and it touched me so much, and I believe, you know, those ladies, um, 
And we were being, and, and, and someone was trying to get us to see them. And, and, and kept trying to get that we could be able to get with them, and we, and we weren't able to, to ever but connect God, with them. Again, but they, but they came. His, his ways. God yeah. Has a different, but they came. A different plan, and of course, his plan, you know, and his ways and his will will always be accomplished in the end. We were willing, we were willing to chase those people, but you know, it just didn't happen that we were, we, we wanted to see them face to face. But God again has his own ways, and still it prevailed. Because, uh, yeah, the mom gave her life to the Lord, and yeah, it was just amazing, and almost every uh, everybody was, you know. Well, and the other lady gave her life, too, and she was yeah. one we tried to see a couple yeah. of times. And, and, and one time we couldn't see her because she was busy, other time she wasn't there. And then to see her walk, walk in uh, into the meeting, and then there was somebody else that uh, was kind of in a backslidden state that really said they wanted to press on with the Lord. Uh, there was a gentleman who I was told he would never walk in the church because he felt too dirty, and he came three or four times. Oh, uh, and then this the one last thing. We keep saying one last thing because that's what I always do is one last thing. Uh, Ed, what about what you saw in Ed? So Ed is our friend from Seattle that came to minister with us for the first time. What did you see going on with Ed? Um, I wasn't. I was surprised. At the same time, I wasn't surprised because I was expectant that God will do something. We, we were, right? We, we both were, were. We were both expecting God to do something. And remember when we said, if nothing else, this may be just for Ed. Yeah, and, and we were okay with that. Praise the Lord. It was not just for Ed. Yeah. But big time for Ed. Seeing him ministering to one of those that was, you know, that are like him. Were like, I don't know. Because it's Ed's past now. Right. Right. So, so he was able to minister and, and just grab hold of him and, and just prayed for him. And that person wrote, a, wrote a note at, after church on Sunday. That person wrote a note to Ed. And the person says, I feel safe being around you. I hope you will hang around here for a while. And true enough, I, I, I believe this word because he came back and came back and came back and came back until we were there. Yeah. Until, you know. So, um, yeah, he, he was sincere. He was sincere, and he was just hanging around, and he did not feel any condemnation, any shame. He was really at peace with the whole family. And, and yet we stood on the truth still, yeah. right? We didn't, we didn't lessen uh, the no, truth or anything like and, and I know you, you're always up front, and you never sh sugarcoat, and that was, you know, sometimes I was just afraid and said, oh, him, here's my husband, and he's not going to sugarcoat, and we'll just say what it is. But you know, it, it was, I believe it was fruitful. Yeah, and, and whatever we missed, I know God will take care of the rest because, you know, He knew our hearts, that our hearts was really to, to, to help, to give hope, and to give encouragement. So, again, whatever we missed out, God, you know, will do the rest. And uh, we don't know what's next. We know we'll be back. Almost for sure we'll be back until unless God told us no. They want us to stay. They want us to pastor the church. They want us to do other ministry. Uh, talk to another pastor. He would like us to be involved. Uh, there's a welcoming here. Uh, we have our reasons to, to say no to a lot of different things. Uh, but do you think we'll be back? Um, I think, you know, if the Lord, I feel in my heart we will be back, but more than anything else, whatever the Lord wills, you know, we'll just be obedient to whatever He wants us to do. And we know Burdick still connect with them. We're going to do that oh, yeah, through no our, what, our uh, uh, prayer line. We're going to do it through our, yeah, our conference line. We set up all, all kinds of different things where we can have connections still. So if they, they want help, they can call us and all of that. Uh, if we never do anything else, then we did what God had for us to do. We feel the tug just because we see the need and the hunger. And so who knows what God is going to do. And we just want to be obedient. So that's, I guess we would end by saying, please pray for us to be obedient and to whatever God say, has for us. All the glory to God because it was Him. He has empowered us. And without yeah. Him, you know, we're just ordinary human beings. We, we felt, we felt we're, so, we're, we're so just, inadequate yeah, the whole time. Yeah, very much inadequate. But God took care because we said, God, this is your work, so this is for your glory, and we want your name to be glorified in the end because it's all about you, and it's coming from you. Everything is from you. You know, our, our, our energy, our everything is from you. So 
to God be the glory in all the things that we have accomplished because they're not accomplished by us, actually through God and by God using us. And we would say that uh, learn from us, just be obedient. Don't, don't try to figure it all out. Don't think that you have to have it all figured out. Don't think you have to have it all together. Just serve him, honor him, and just do what he says, and, and he takes care of everything else. Amen. Amen.